Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and we are all standing in a parking lot in Oakland, right? We have volunteers from Chabot Space Science Center's Galaxy Explorers Club, and we have a bunch of other willing uh, space experts, engineers, who are going to help me with uh, either a crazy or a dumb or a fantastic artistic project. So this uh, parking lot here is about 200 feet long. In Chabot there, they have a one-to-one -one scale model replica off the Mercury capsule. We always thought it would. the problem with that is that people don't get to see how big the rocket is. So we're gonna draw a, a version of the Atlas Mercury launch vehicle that was used to put that capsule into orbit. So it's gonna be just about 100 feet long. It's gonna be full scale. We're gonna lay it down with tape and we're gonna give people in Oakland the idea of how big the rockets actually were because we don't really have a rocket park in Oakland. So you guys excited? Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. Are we uh, gonna do this? Yeah. yeah. Who's the, who thinks they're the engineer experts here? Okay, <laughs> oh yes, okay, Maya. <laughs> It takes four of us to work uh, to uh, measure a three, four, five triangle so that we can get the rocket perpendicular over the distances required. I'll do it that time. Fantastic! Okay, so this is actually one of the hardest parts that everyone has their own ideas, but what we're trying to do is lay out the rocket so that it will be square. We need a spine down the side which will be exactly square. We've got a, the base of the rocket laid out here. Which makes sense because this is where the parking line is. This is that line. So we're good. Now let's do this on the other side. Okay, it looks like uh, our capsule is human scaled. You can just about fit inside that, right? Does it feel snug? Yeah, well, you know, the, it's pretty open on the right. Yeah, I, I think we'll need to put a bit of a, a, a door on there or something. Some protection from the elements. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But you can control it from there, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's can, not crashing. I can, reach, I can reach pretty much everything. All you can reach all the controls. Yeah. We've laid out a one-to-one -one capsule. The interstage. Top of the tank. Ah, oh, yeah. We get the cable conduits. We have everything. We gotta get like antenna fairings and stuff put down. But we've got the the engine section at the bottom. Oh my God! Look, when this is done, this is like the final outline, and everything else from this point on is detail. We are ready to go to space. Except we're missing one engine. Okay, well, you know, we're pretty getting pretty close. I'm gonna say these engines are actually really nice, being done nicely. They've got a nice curve to them and everything. Like, props to you on the detail on this. Look at him, like he's laying out these really tiny pieces of tape to really make it look right. That's how you get those sweet, sweet curves. This is absolutely marvelous. Do you know what those actually are supposed to be? The regenerative, um, this isn't, wait, this isn't the regenerative cooling plumbing yeah, things. Yeah, that, that's bigger than that. Is it? Yeah. Uh -oh. like five. <laughs> uh oh, you gotta keep those straight, otherwise the engine will overheat. Yes, <laughs> can't, can't have, can't have the yeah. yeah, you cannot have an engine overheating. Because yes. um, this is a historic like vehicle. Yeah, we are at the point oh, where we've got... Exploded. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, you, as I mentioned, the Atlas is the only rocket that I know that has imploded. Yes, because it had balloon tanks, and if the pressure was lost on the tanks, they would collapse under their own weight. And so there's a case where fueling one at Vandenberg, they lost pressure, and it just crumpled like an inflatable toy without air. Do you know if there are videos of that? There is a video of that. The I'm, going, I'm going home and looking that up right now. No, it just kind of collapsed because it had a you know, payload on top of it, and it oh, wasn't and able to support the weight. Yeah, it was like... So I'm just going to do that. Even though it may not be exactly in line, we got it on the other Shade. side. Okay. Who wants to do the oxygen? Also, line? there is um, like what, what were the digits? One five zero nine. Thank you. 
Okay, so what you're looking at is the business end of my one-to-one -one drawing of an Atlas rocket. An Atlas Mercury. This is the one that launched John Glenn into orbit back in 1962. The idea was we wanted to render it in white lines, so we used tape for all the lines. This is masking tape, four inches, two inches, one inches, depending upon what we got. The whole thing is about 96 feet tall, including the escape tower, which as we found out is pretty important right now. So yeah, the Atlas was the first intercontinental ballistic missile developed by the United States, and it was adapted to carry the Mercury spacecraft. A well, it has room for one person, and it was something that you would wear rather than fly in. It has the escape tower on top, the interstage, because the Mercury capsule was a little wider than they expected. Running down the side, we have a bunch of conduits and fuel lines. As we get to here, we get the... Um, this is the oxygen fairing that comes out the side that feeds the lower engines, or the big engines. There's also an oxygen pipe that feeds the center engine. Over there, we have the fuel conduit that feeds the outer engines. This here, that is the vernier housing. The verniers would, of course, steer the spacecraft as it launched. And down here, we have three engines. So the two outer engines were powerful boost engines that would lift it off the ground, get it up to speed. And then once they were going fast, they would drop off and the core engine, which was more efficient, would carry it on into orbit. So yeah, these launched uh, a number of Americans and a chimpanzee into space in the early 1960s. And of course, the Atlas has since evolved into a more awesome rocket. We have the Atlas V still flying today. So this is, this is the team, the team, they all did it. Galaxy Explorers from Chabot, right? How, five of you, anyone want to shout out your names? Is that <laughs> Chip, Lee, we, we have two bags, Crunchy, bags. Crunchy sorry. Carla, yes. This uh, is not quite a... This is not quite... Explorer. This is potential future gallery, gal, galaxy explorer. <laughs> Eleanor, and uh, of course, we've got um, Max, Max Todd. Todd. Oh, and I got low power mode. John. John. And it yeah, better Eleanor still be recording. It's still recording. Eleanor again. And Eleanor again. And Adam. And Adam, and me, and of course, Orion. And this is the final rocket. It's amazing. And I'm so happy. Give your hand a... Round of applause! This was amazing! Did you realize that the Atlas rocket was quite this big? Like, and it's a small rocket! It's a small, you, rocket. It's a small rocket and it's huge! Like, Eleanor, how fast can you run up this rocket? Are you a fast runner? Yeah. Start at the bottom, rate. We're gonna do the Eleanor rocket race. Ready? Go! Yes! Time it! <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot harder to do if you're uh, if you're going up the side of the real thing because it's vertical. Yeah. But yeah, these were launching 50 years ago, almost 60 years ago now. Originally, yeah, originally an ICBM, and it became uh, the vehicle that took the first American astronauts into orbit and into, of course, a great space age. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.